da, 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 da. Welcome back to Natasha's narrative. My offer got rescinded. So when I was in Uganda this summer, uh, well last summer I should say, 2019, I called up, I called up the uni and because they had gone into clearing and explained the whole situation and they were just like, oh, um, yeah, we're still not going to let you in, which I thought was odd. And I was seeing that they had removed their medical tests. So normally if you're familiar with um, applying to med schools, there are three tests, UCAT, BMAT and GAMSAT, um, which is for graduates. And so the fact that they'd removed that testing and they were allowing people who hadn't even done it to apply for medicine, I was like, this is so strange, but I just left let it be and then I was seeing on the student room that they'd actually reduced her grade um offers from three A's to AAB which was actually what I achieved at A level so to me it really didn't make sense as to why my offer was being rescinded but I didn't see the point of going forth and arguing about it because I didn't really want to be at a university that didn't want me so my one of my best friends actually was like super well she is super brilliant um but she was extremely super brilliant during this time so she was calling up unis you know um talking to them telling them my grades i got an offer from sunderland and st george's but it meant that i had to cut my holiday short so the sunderland one i rejected because i just didn't see the point of going um because by the time I would have left Uganda, it was so tight whether I would have actually been able to make it all the way from London, all the way up to Sunderland. So I just rejected it. So I actually ended up coming home early um, to go to a medical school interview. But anyway, um, so sat the interview. I thought it went OK, but not uh, the greatest. Um, again, it was one of those. Ru this was a rush decision. So I don't think I really got time to pray and meditate over it because I didn't really have well, I did pray and meditate. I did pray over it, but it was just one of those ones where you had to jump because you don't have time. It wasn't the smartest decision, to be honest, because I was pretty tired. I don't think it was the best decision because for those of you that have traveled to Uganda, you know that Uganda doesn't have direct flights anymore um, to, or from, to and from Britain. So I had to go to Dubai and then fly back. So obviously I was quite tired. Um, I tried to read on the plane, but you know, you can only do so much, especially when you're quite exhausted. I don't sleep on plane, so that doesn't really help. So I was kind of up for a long amount of time, but I tried my best. Obviously I wasn't successful. So by this time, how many times have I applied? Year 13, gap year, um, first year of uni, third year of uni. So this is my fifth time of applying. That's what I'm telling you, you cannot give up, honestly. I had so many people telling me, oh, Tasha, why don't you just become a biomedical scientist? Why don't you switch to pharmacy? Um, and it was all out of love. It was all out of love. Everyone just wanted the best for me. But that's why you need to really know God for yourself and you need to know what is really for you. Because if I had decided to listen, I would not be able to speak about this testimony today. I think it was honestly my resilience and especially as I grew with God, my obedience to him that allowed me to be able to get to where I am at the moment, having three offers. Um, so please, even if you're not Christian and you don't believe in God, I'm telling you, please don't give up. If you feel like medicine is for you or any type of career, just keep on pushing. This life is not easy. And I think there are so many times that you see people getting things the first time round or the second time round and you think, okay, that means it's not for me. No, that's not necessarily true. I was in my best mental and spiritual mindset when I applied for medicine this year, which is why I think I was able to do so well. But anyway, sorry, that was a bit of a detour. I'm going to continue with what happened. So when I went to apply this time um, for the fifth time, I didn't really have that much time to revise for the UCAT because I, you know, I sat my interview. As soon as I sat my interview, um, I took a few days off because I went to Carney. And um, then I started revising. But I also had my grad party coming up. So my... I was kind of split trying to help organise that and concentrate and my mum kind of was like, why, you know, maybe it's not a good idea to apply for 2020 entry, apply for the next year, you'll, you'll have rested. But I knew 
my capabilities which is why again like i said before it's so important to know yourself and to know what blessings are for you so i just told my mom no i'm gonna do this yeah so i did my ucat test i got an average of 695 band one so that was a i think i scored in the like the 86th percentile something like that it's not the highest um score but it's pretty good so if you guys want advice on what i did to help prep for my ucat all the tips and stuff i can make um a separate video on personal statement ucat interview um advice etc etc because i just feel like i'm so blessed to be in this position and um i would yeah so if you guys want help i am more than willing to help you guys so that was the score i got I applied again to Newcastle, Warwick, Kings, so three of the four were the same, and then I applied to Queen Mary's. So I got interviews for Warwick, Kings and Newcastle, um, not for Queen Mary's, they, it's cool, don't worry about me, it's fine. So I didn't get interviews for there, but um, my interview for Newcastle was the 12th of December, my interview for Warwick was the 17th. Of December yeah 17th of December 17th we're gonna go with 17th yeah 17th of the, yeah it was the 17th of December sorry um, and then Kings was the 10th of January so I as you can see I did not have that much time between the Warwick interview and the and the Newcastle interview and I actually found out about my Kings interview before my Warwick interview but I ended up interviewing later I don't know why they told me about it in November and I interviewed in January but whatever I got it so that's fine so I have a really really good friend um, called Munya um, he goes by Delirious on Instagram and he also has um, a medical YouTube um, channel so you guys should check him out he goes by Dr Charles honestly this guy fantastic like he prepped me for my mock interview for like four or five hours so i really didn't think it was going to be that intense like when i asked him for help um i kind of thought like yeah i'll go over to his house like one one or two hours i should explain he goes to newcastle uni um so i prepped with him before my newcastle uni um interview and he's a fourth year at the moment so i didn't really expect that much even though he had sent me lots of like really helpful materials but he really took time out of his day to help me and i think it's so important to have people who are willing to support you and help you the best way they can even i have so many friends even um the girl i was talking about before manuela she helped prep me for my interview before while she also read my personal statement my friend rami also read my personal statement i have a friend yasmin who also read my personal statement like use the resources around you Munya again use the resources around you basically if you have friends that are doing medicine or have done medicine um there's so many people who i also haven't you know shouted out and said thank you to but you are in my heart um use them because they are more than willing to help you they've already gone through this process and i think sometimes we get too scared or a little bit too prideful to ask for help i'm the same but definitely use the resources you have so he helped me he went we went through loads of different situations like he his acting skills were on point um different types of personalities that you can meet at a gp office or a hospital which was great and um, really helps prepare you calms your nerves as well i was extremely prepared for that and like i said i found out this week on monday i heard back from warwick getting an offer and then on wednesday i heard back from king's getting an offer and two weeks before that i think it was the 27th of november 27th or 28th of november i heard back from newcastle getting an offer so yeah i've just been extremely grateful grateful to god grateful to the opportunity grateful to my friends um grateful for having characteristics that have allowed me to kind of like i said being extremely resilient um has allowed me to i think achieve um well at least it's part of the reason why i've been able to achieve this and yeah so that's literally what i wanted to just share with you guys um just remember that god's got you um remember that god 
does want you to enjoy life if he gives you a passion it's probably for a reason if you've been praying and asking on it and you know it fits with his will and his purpose so i think that's mostly what i have to say yeah um got yeah he's just always ready to do things for you if you're willing to just make that step sometimes i think we also get too complacent thinking like oh you know i'm just gonna pray and just wait sometimes god's waiting for you to make that first step and show that you know your resilience and obedience towards it or towards him and then he does what he can do because honestly i really did, if i think about that work interview i really did not think i was that deserving um I didn't think that it was the best in in fact it was my worst interview out of the three for sure i was quite shocked and stunned when i got a place but yeah that's how i got into three medical schools out of four three interviews being successful i will also be talking guys um in later videos in more detail like i said about personal statement um ucat um in interviews how to approach them how to prep for them because i know you guys want to hear about stuff like that but the main message that I just want you guys to take away from this is if medical school or dentistry or, you know, what, whatever it is, if you feel a passion or calling for it, don't give up. Just keep going, keep going, because I don't think 17 year old me, who was just crying for one offer, would ever have imagined that I would be in the position to get three. So just keep plodding along keep trying keep pushing and you will get where you want to be so thank you guys anyway for listening thank you guys for being so loyal watching my videos for putting up with all my annoying instagram posts those of you who follow me on instagram already if not follow her at natasha.narrative um thank you for the views total views have surpassed 1000 um i'm just really grateful for the new subscribers everything thank you so much um yeah this is natasha's narrative bye